Today's episode is the result of a very synchronistic meeting, and my guest is so powerful and so cool, and I cannot wait to introduce him to you. His name is Pavel Stuchlik. He also goes by Noah Aon, um, so you can find him on social media as um, Noah Aon Official, I believe it is. We'll link it in the show notes. Let me tell you a little bit about him and how we met. So I'll I'll say a little bit as we start the interview, but it was just so crazy. I was in the middle of moving to Hawaii. My house is literally in shambles, boxes everywhere, so much to do. And I just had this very intuitive feeling that I should go to Dave Asprey's biohacking conference in Orlando. I go out to it and I'm looking through the speaker list as for potential podcast guests. And I just landed right on this Noah Aon guy. I'm like, uh, there's something about his energy. This is good energy. Who is this guy? And as I read his bio, I was like, okay, wow. Yeah, we got to get him on the show. (laughs) And then when I met him at his booth, which by the way, was just the most beautiful energy, him and his whole team. I was just like, whoa, there's some high frequency energy over here at this booth. I found out that he would be on the big island of Hawaii for a month because he and his wife were having their baby out here. And so we got to uh, meet several times. I had him over to my home to do this interview. And so it was just really cool how that all came together. He is so awesome. You guys are in for such a treat. Um, Let me tell you a little bit about him. So he has over 15 years of experience traveling the world and immersing himself in some of the most rigorous teachings. He really means that you were going to see. He also goes by Noah, so I'll refer to him as Noah in intro. Noah has become an expert in transformation, self-realization, and harmonious living. As an international conscious DJ slash producer, so all over the world, I think he told me, did he say something like he does like, it was like 150 shows a year or something. He does a lot of stuff. Um, A serial impact seven-figure entrepreneur and investor, certified ambassador of peace, and Wim Hof instructor, um, went with Wim Hof for a year, you know, training all that. That's just one of many things that he's done. Noah has a unique and diverse set of skills that he brings to his workshops, immersive experiences, retreats, and lectures. His teachings integrate ancient wisdom with modern science and technology to provide simple daily routines that can help you achieve unity, love, and joy in your life. Um, One of Noah's most notable experiences was spending a total of 40 days in darkness with no food, mm -hmm, for real, living with the breatharians in Thailand. From this experience, Noah Aeon has brought back some of the most effective teachings and created a movement with his Noah Aeon movement, which aims to bring people back to unity, love, and joy. He has spoken amongst world-recognized leaders such as Dave Asprey, Montak Chia, Sadhguru, Jim Quick, Vision, Ben Greenfield, Joe Mercola, Deepak Chopra. You know, he's really out there doing the work. And I was able to go to one of his system reset experiences here that he did on the Big Island and had some massive breakthroughs. I was very grateful for that. And towards the end of the episode, he's going to take us through a little Um, like five minute breath work thing, do it. It If you can at all do it, do it. Because I could not believe how far I went in five minutes. I was like, dang, okay. Okay. I see you, Pavel. (laughs) So um, let's go ahead and get into the episode. So pleased to introduce you to Noah Aeon, also known as Pavel Stuchlik. I can't believe that I found you on the, I was looking at the biohacking conference, Dave Asprey's, and I'm like looking through all the speakers and everybody there. And I'm like, when I saw, saw you, I was like, good energy. I was like, what is this guy? And then I saw some stuff about 40 days in darkness and all this. I'm like, who, this guy seems cool. And then I went to your booth and it wasn't just you. I have to say like everyone at your booth, it was just such clean, pure heart centered energy. I was like, these are good people. This is, I like this. And then it was so crazy that you happened to be coming out to the big island. So, you know, cause I was like, I got to get you on my podcast, dude. And you, here we are, you know, <laughs> and for such a special reason, I'm going to have your baby out here. So cool. So thank you for coming over to be on the show. And I'm super excited to introduce my people to you because you're doing, um, you're answering the call. I would put it that way. It's clear that you're answering the call, you know? So what an honor to yeah. be here and what a synchronicity, right? I, I mean, we're literally like if there wasn't 
crazy loop, we would be like five minutes away from each other. <laughs> so nuts. I'm like, well, that'll work. <laughs> and very excited for the people here. They don't even, I, I bet a lot of these people, I'm like, they don't know what's coming. I ho I'm like telling everybody, I'm like, you've got to go to his event. Like, it's going to be really cool. And speaking of that, um, I we talked about maybe ha having you show some of what you do, and then we'll get into a little more depth discussing what you do. And then we'll go back into your story a little bit of like, how did you get here? So if that's cool. Yes, so I'll I would you, love to. Let you lead. And, and you know, and part of the reason why our team uh, may be perceived to be so, you know, heart centered, you know, every morning we started with group coherence. Mm. And so even when we go to festivals, mm. when we go to conferences and especially these busy areas, mm -hmm. we still hold this coherent energy. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to do with you. And Yay. so... Whatever you are, just uh, please make sure uh, when I'm saying close your eyes, if you're driving, <laughs> do not do that. Um, you can still tune in, just uh, avoid any of the closure. And uh, yeah, let's just drop in. All so right. we're going to close our eyes. And first thing first, I like to teach something called an instant presence. So you just connect into your subtle breath. The gold standard is five and a half seconds on inhale through your nose. And five and a half seconds on exhale, out your nose. This little simple rhythm increases your heart rate variability, lowers down your stress, and brings more heart-brain coherence. Now that's the tool number one. Tool number two, can you be aware of your full body? We tend to be on our phones in the future, in the past. So we just fully inhale but through every pore of your skin, as if these champagne-like bubbles were bubbling up around your body. And with each exhale, exhale through those bubbles as well. And our two, third tool of instant presence, can you pay attention to the stillness and silence underneath the noise? You could be in the middle of festival, subway, and you can still be aware of your breath, body awareness, and stillness and silence beneath the noise. Now when you feel this, just imagine that you're reaching out with your hands to all of the people tuning into this. Time doesn't exist in these realms, and so we're going to bring this coherence. And coherence, we're going to start breathing in and out of your heart. And when you inhale, just connect as if these little infinite webs of these lights were connecting all of us, as if we were all in one room at this little circle. And just connect into what do you want to receive and what do you want to give? Because this energy can be enheightened with this breath. And now inhale into your heart. And exhale out your hands into this circle. Inhale into your heart. Exhale out through your hands. And just ask, show me the way. Show me how can I become one with this group, one with this session. To have this beautiful experience or whatever you might be going through. And remember, smile. Smile at your life. Smile at your body. Smile at your organs. And whatever that neighbor is right next to you, just smile at them too. You never know who needs you. And I want to open this up to be used as an instrument of love and light in the perfect amount needed for the greatest good of the whole in a triple benefit where it benefits me, benefits you, and benefits the whole earth that we live on. Thank you all for tuning in. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you. I um, listened to your interview with my friend Josh Trent, and I got the vibe from that that you're on a similar, you're operating from a similar place as me. I resonated with it and your process there just reminded me of it is 
just asking, how can I be of service that benefits everyone? How, show me the way. Just show me and I, yeah, I'll do it. You know, that's, is, would you say that's kind of what has gotten you here, that way of being? You know, what's gotten me here was years of going the wrong direction <laughs> and years of pain, mm. years of suffering, years of hurting others with mm. my actions. Mm. And what I've learned, you know, it's all the summary of choices mm. and consequences. And it's literally as simple as that. But we get so put on mute in life where we don't see these choices and consequences because of that delay. And that delay can sometimes really disrupt us and it keeps us in that same loop until we've had enough mm -hmm. and we get mad inside at ourselves and around the surrounding and we either take the charge into our hands or we're going to continue blaming the external for whatever choices we've made. Mm -hmm. And so after I was done blaming, <laughs> after I was done playing victim, mm -hmm. I kept on questioning, what is the true meaning of life? Like, mm -hmm. is this it? You know, to make money, go to school, um, do this little life thing and be unhappy, you know, for what and for who? Mm. And so through about 15 years of traveling and mm. learning from some of the most uncomfortable situations, I finally got it. <laughs> mm. And when I say I got it, I got to a point where I took charge for my life to be on this transformation. And the transformation doesn't end. You know, the minute that I think I've mastered something, <laughs> the next set of mastering comes in. Oh, yeah. And the minute that I ever think that I'm a master of anything, <laughs> then I become nothing. <laughs> mm. So, okay, so you're in, the, in the, when you say you got it, you know, how would you describe that to somebody if you're, you know, you've got a new baby girl, correct, coming along the way? And she said, what do you mean you got it? Besides saying, you know, being constantly humbled and constantly learning, what would you say is the purpose of life that you've found? <laughs> you know, the purpose of life, I've got it totally wrong. And so when I say I got it, I got everything that I ever thought about this life, the upside down. <laughs> and it's by, it's by design. And um, we are kept to be limited, whatever mm -hmm. it's our mind, our emotions, our spiritual connection, our thoughts, our experiences in careers. I mean, everywhere we go, we're like put into this little square. Mm -hmm. And if we are above the square, we're run upon. We are taught that, you know, well, we're crazy mm -hmm. until that is gone and we accept ourselves and we feel that we're worthy enough mm -hmm. to go into this journey. Mm -hmm. And I call this journey through self-transformation that we are all on. And essentially, um, what I would say to, to her, when she gets a little bit older, <laughs> it would be that there's this process that never ends. And these are four steps that I've identified that kind of happen to be in all the aspects of life. Mm. And so the first process is waking up. Mm. It's this awakening. You're starting to see things that did not work for you, that you are ready to let go of. Mm. And, um, that could be your relationships, right? There's a relationship that obviously needs some work. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be your negative self-doubt, your mm -hmm. negative thoughts about not being good enough, not being worthy enough. Mm -hmm. It could be the constant emotions of jealousy, guilt, mm -hmm. or it, it kind of goes into every aspect. Mm -hmm. So you wake up, you bring it up to the surface. Mm -hmm. It could be as simple as taking a blood test if we are looking at it from the physical yeah. perspective. Right. And maybe you are low on vitamin D, high on environmental toxins. So it gives you assessment to start with. Mm. The second part is clean up, cleaning up and letting go of the old. Mm. And I used to be master at <laughs> keeping the old and also bringing the new, <laughs> thinking that they both can work <laughs> and they can, but you're living in duality. You've got highs, you've got lows, you've got mm. good days and bad days. And you're going to continue looking forward to the next bad day because it's the life is too good to be true. Mm. So this is when you detox the body. Mm -hmm. This is when you let go of negative emotions, thoughts, and it's got to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. The third phase is the phase when you're finally becoming the driver of your own vehicle. Mm -hmm. And this is when you go into that empowerment. This is when you step into the seat of your own life and you supplement vitamin D. You bring a new tribe in. You rewire those thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, I spent years of writing every negative thought I had about myself. 
and about another. And then I start rewriting it into yeah. what do I actually want to think about myself? Wow. Because this is mind is the software, body is mm -hmm. the hardware. Mm -hmm. And it's all about to be programmed so it works for us. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth step of this journey is resting up and repeat the cycle. Mm. And um, we've got micro cycles and macro cycles. So there are some that are within our same, within, within our framework of who we are. Mm -hmm. That's the physical body, mental body, emotional body, spiritual body. And I call it the me, the individual consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the we, which is the collective consciousness. And that's relationships, environment, what is the air we're breathing, food we're eating. It kind of goes into everything that's around us. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the supra consciousness. I call it the B. Mm -hmm. So it's me, we, and B, the model mm -hmm. that, that I've learned to operate uh, mm -hmm. in. And to kind of shine the light too. Mm. And the B is the essence, the supra consciousness. How did we get here? You know, if mm. this universe was created 13.5 billion years ago, you know, what a little dot of a blink of yeah. an eye we actually are. Right. And so in the rest up phase, this is the most important phase mm. to unhook from this reality. Mm -hmm. And when I say unhook, I'm talking about getting inward. Mm -hmm. um, stop using computers and TVs mm -hmm. and, and um, being so busy in that do, do, do mindset and move into that beingness, mm -hmm. being to that essence that we are so we can actually re-identify re who we want to be and, mm -hmm. and who actually are we. Mm -hmm. Because until we take time off, Mm -hmm. We're living somebody else's life, mixing thoughts, ideas, visions with partners, with friends, with, you know, co-workers. Right. But we are living us here. It all starts with us. Mm -hmm. And so this little framework has uh, helped me tremendously mm -hmm. to kind of consciously look into where am I at which stage. Mm -hmm. So well said and, and deeply, you can tell you've gone deep. <laughs> you can tell you've gone deep. And I, when you said that, you know, being in the beingness, I've spent a lot of, that's been a big thing for me uh, more than ever lately, mm -hmm. um, is more being less doing, even, you know, I've been in, listening to a lot of Alan Watts and Ram Dass and, you know, we just read The Way of Zen. So I'm pretty deep in that right mm -hmm. now of even thoughtlessness, you know. Um, and it made me think of what you've been doing to do that as a reset for yourself. Can you talk about the darkness? I mean, obviously, I know you're doing this like on a regular basis. It's not only once a year, but can you talk about your experience with the darkness? I think it's very profound and pretty brave. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first time I actually truly unhooked in my life mm. and uh, the first time I went um, it's about seven years ago mm. and I went in there as a busy entrepreneur I mm. back then I was running Orange Theory Fitness locations all over the country Wow! and I um, you know I had a totally different trajectory yeah. than I am on today Wow! but this dark room it's um, it's created by this amazing lady and my mentor Jas Mohin Mm. Who, who has taught me uh, that we don't need to eat physical food to survive. And uh, she's a breatharian for the last 25 years. Wow. And she brought the pranic living or lifestyle into the West. Mm. And so when you go into this dark room, it's not that you're in dark and you have food. You have no physical food, you know, no light. It's specifically done that, that for, for it's a nine nights and nine days with a 10 day that you, that you can acc accommodate or acclimatize. Mm. And um, it wasn't until day seven that I finally got it. I like surrendered into the beingness. Yeah. And um, the seven. hardest, it was seven days oh. the first time of just brutal wow. thoughts and monkey brain. Right. And, and the Whoa. food part is easy. Mm. It's your mind. Wow. It's a bitch when you like, That's have a this. long <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> that's like one thing to just think about but like actually imagining you know you're on in the middle of day three and a half day five and a half and you're just like all Nothing right yet. i got this uh it was that kind of how it was at first sometimes you're like <laughs> get me out of here you know right because because of the mind but there is a flow to it so it takes about three to four days to fully like detox to fully mm. like settle in then Day four or five, you start actually seeing lights everywhere because mm. you start you clear out your pineal gland. Mm. And um, then you start having these massive doses of DMT release That's into your brain. And so you are walking in there and she actually teaches you meditations how to tone down the light. 
because it's so intense. You're like seeing orbs and lights and then you don't know if you're in a nightclub or in wow. the night when you're sleeping. You don't know where you are. Are you in the day or, or what is going on? Wow. And the only thing you know about the time is when the frogs comes in in the morning <laughs> and wow. then at night. So wow. you're like, okay, it must be around, you know, 4 right. to 6 a.m. ish. Wow. And then you're like, when is the next meditation? And then you might be there for six hours <laughs> because wow. of the time. Wow. And when you're bonded to time, that's when it's brutal. Right, right. You know? <laughs> of course. <laughs> when There's an expectation with that. Yes. Yeah. And when you step outside of the time, right. this is when you're in total bliss. Wow. And it took me seven days to drop into that bliss. Wow. And for the first time in my life, I touch myself for who I am, not mm. for who I am not. Mm. And this is literally when I walk out of there and I created the Noah Aeon mm. um, wow. movement. Wow. And basically, Noah means movement, Aeon is all or none, and it mm. symbolizes duality that I continue mm. to operate in for a very long time. And mm. it means, you know, I had a good days and bad days and good mm. sales and bad sales and whatever, you know, life experience yeah. that I was having, I kept on dancing in this. No, I didn't dance. I wish I was <laughs> dancing in it. I kept on suffering through it. <laughs> wow. uh, but when I walked out of there, I had a clear vision. And mm. that vision was, I lost my passion. I wasn't living my passion. Mm. I did not feel like I had purpose, mm. even though I checked list every single box of American dream. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I wanted to leave legacy. And so I literally, it became so clear. So my passion was music or is music. Mm -hmm. And so I walked out of there and I started learning how to produce a Sophie geofrequency nice. style on a modern beat. Nice. I... Um, knew at that time that I've done all of these crazy things, uh, like darkroom, it, it wasn't the only crazy thing, and, um, and I've learned so much from it that I could not keep it just for myself. Mm. So my purpose became lectures, workshops, mm. retreats, and then the legacy, uh, you know, at that time, I started a company called Tomorrow's Vision, which originally was supposed to be a uh, fund uh, to help other companies that are here for the greatest good of the whole. Mm. But later on, about three years later, I lost everything and I went completely wow. Um, broke. Wow. And um, it was the second extreme that I went into. I went from total businessman and entrepreneur and real estate dealing. Speaking of the reset thing. <laughs> Speaking of the reset thing. <laughs> wow. But I, I got it wrong as well, you know. Mm. So I literally went from like Aeon way of life, the degenerative spiral that I was on. Wow. Into the Noah that... that spiritual wow. you know realms wow. and you know to be honest this happens a lot in a spiritual community yeah you know you have people yeah. that are so spiritual but they're so broke right but to be broke is not spiritual right because abundance is supposed to be coming on every level exactly but i didn't believe that mm. to be honest mm. i i thought that my my business head-on was the money head-on Right. And then my service head on was that I'm just going to keep on giving and giving wow. until I got sick, tired, divorced. Wow. I mean, everything was stripped away from me wow. because of this crazy mm. um, uh, transition. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Wow. I, you know, it's funny. I, I was just talking to a friend about that recently. Like, it's especially when you're doing spiritual soul work. The money thing is like, I think everyone sits with that a little bit. If you're going to do that for a living, it's kind of like, okay, I got to sit with this. How do I feel? And the way I feel is this is like, I mean, if you've been on a consciousness journey, like it's going to lead to a huge um, learning experience on self-love, right? And to me, it's like, okay, well, if you're wanting everyone to have so much goodness, then if it's not also coming back at you in terms of like having what you need or beyond that thriving, you know, be, and being able to create more goodness with it. Now there's something off there to me, you know, there's some sort of like, I need to almost prove my goodness or my value by self-sacrificing kind of, you know, and it's a tricky one and I don't judge anybody with wherever they're at on that. But I, you know, I think we've all been there of like, I just want to give and love and I don't need anything. And then you're like, wait a minute, I need food. Okay. You know, um, it, it is a consciousness. What, you know, where have you landed with that? I'm curious where you sit with, you know, I believe money is like a, your relationship with money and how that all works is a certain consciousness. Where, where have you landed? It's a tool. It's a comfortable yeah. tool that we've been given just like any other energy. Mm -hmm. But, uh, 
again, I think by design, you know, we we are locked into this paradigm that, you know, to be spiritual means that we give everything out. Right. And I mean, it comes from all traditions, if you think about it, right? Giving up sex, giving up uh, money, giving up, right. you know, life, basically, right. that which, we came here to experience. Which you can. Of course, you, you can do that if you want to. You know, you can do that yeah, life. And, absolutely. It, yeah. It, it's, it's, a, it's a choice, right, mm-hmm. of, of anyone. Mm-hmm. But for a regular person, I mean, Mm -hmm. we came here to enjoy this life Mm -hmm. and to play in this life. Now, I'm going through a soul sovereignty training right now. Mm. And it's so crazy how much it has taught me. Mm. So when I had, um, you know, tons of money, I I was expected to pay for everyone and everything. And Mm. I was feeding everyone and, and, you know, paying for everyone. And um, this created such a disbalance in my yeah. soul sovereignty yeah. because there was no repercussion. Right. And I created monsters around me right. because there was this demand and expectation. Right. And the craziest part, it didn't hurt me as much as it hurt the other people because their abundance is cut because they are operating out of lack and mm-hmm. expectation or mm-hmm. need from someone else. Mm-hmm. So through this, I've had to rebalance every aspect of my life in this way. And ironically, you know, I made everything back after with the biggest di- dichotomy of my life. I made it right thanks to COVID. And, um, mm. you know, when COVID hit, I, um, I, all, everything I had left at that point was either group fitness or, or venues or, um, or our events. Mm. And I was like, okay, wow. I'm just going to go right. bankrupt now. <laughs> this is <laughs> right. over. And I have no idea how to apply for anything with the government. I, before I do that, I'll go and, and dance on the street. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'll know how to do that better. <laughs> You're like, I can sing, I, cannot I can do, do whatever you want. <laughs> Allergic to paperwork. <laughs> or anything constitutional, I cannot. That was funny. My brain doesn't operate this way. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, so so I canceled like 40 events in the first quarter. Wow. And I at that time, I was literally living event to event. I mean, every account got frozen at, at a time when I got into the wars. I was below zero everywhere. And coming from, you know, I was flying private jets and I was uh, making millions of dollars at, at my peak. And going to this with my lifestyle, it was very humbling. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'm so grateful that I did because it taught me I was never, it was never for me at the end of the day for the money. It didn't change my character. If anything, mm-hmm. I was still giving the same way, just with mm-hmm. much less <laughs> reserves. Wow. Wow. But, uh, but um, what, what happened was I, we were like... Okay, we're either going to bankrupt or in those type of times, there's also a biggest opportunity mm. because in a very short time, you can, you know, create um, whatever you, you know, is needed. Mm-hmm. And so um, because of being an entrepreneur, COVID testing at that time was a great solution to bring events back because that's how you could get around the, mm-hmm. the legislations. Yeah. So we started a COVID testing uh, company. Oh, wow. And it was month after COVID happened, we already had drive through clinic. We also start converting orange theories into a testing. Wow. And then it built into this crazy uh, testing empire where we made it all the way to Home Depot, (laughs) IG Hotels, Sony Pictures. I mean, we tested some of the biggest corporations. You're such an entrepreneur. (laughs) So, but I don't believe in any of this. Just to clarify this, I thought it was a total (laughs) bullshit, but the way... The way I try to justify it was like, okay, we're creating a convenience. We're giving people peace that they can go and do yeah. their thing. And, and it, we were like a high-end concierge service. Uh-huh. So we were also testing like billionaire parties. And we were the ones to call when somebody right. needed to right. get around. Well, well I would have rather yeah. had your people doing it than anybody else. They probably left some little nuggets of wisdom along the way. <laughs> But, and so, so, and then how do you feel about, cause like to me, I hear that instantly and I'm like, and then that provided you a path to be able to bring more goodness to the world. So at first, you know, my, myself was like, again, I'm not worthy of this, you know, like mm-hmm. how is this happening? But mm-hmm. it was happening really, you know, for me to basically mm-hmm. regain my energy, rebuild my trust and be able to choose what I want to do next. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and then, you know, the next phase was I've always been in service of others so other companies consulting helping Mm. you know again just giving out all my energy out and then you know being taken advantage of and then not being part of the the deals and Mm. just connecting people and Mm -hmm. and getting left out of it Mm. so 
you know, a couple of years ago or th- almost three years ago, I decided to quit alcohol. Mm. And when I decided to quit alcohol, then the series of utter toxicity that I was still bonded to wow. start ripping off. Wow. So, you know, alcohol made me quit, you know, any, any drugs, any, uh, any even, you know, cannabis. I mean, I literally just start stripping all of this away, wow. that cleanup phase. Mm. And that gave me this clarity. And it happened the same way with other business partners, you know, that I, that were not of uh, balance. Mm-hmm. And I went all into, to the Noah movement. Wow. And it was so freeing because wow. I've always wanted to, but I never believed that mm. I can, mm. you know? Mm. So today... We're, I'm living my passion. Yay. I'm living my purpose. And we're creating legacy mm. with the products, the courses, the, everything that we're, we're mm. making. <laughs> mm. So many nuggets in that whole story. Because, like, thank you for sharing. Because, I, you know, I, I've noticed with friends, I think, you know, one thing I hear from you big time is, like, I notice with friends who are, you know, pretty affluent, I'm like, what are they, why are they always paying for every, I know they want to get, they're all like that. They're all like that. Every single one of them, they don't get, they want to, but I'm like, yeah, but like, can, can I just please? Because like, it's just, to me, it just feels mm, like there should be equal give and take, you know? And I think there's some, uh, and, and also allowing people the, the feeling of giving to you, you know, it feels good for other people to give too, but it's interesting because, like, I think what you found was, like, you always had this open-hearted, like, give, 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 give. And when you started applying more of that to yourself, you know, the people who weren't quite in resonance with you also receiving just started to fall out of your life, mm-hmm. you know. And you were like, it's time to, it's time to fully step into what I want and what I it, – it, not even what you want, what feels – joyous is almost what I hear from you. Mm-hmm. What feels joyous to you, you know, like that would be awesome. It, it, that's what I, that's the, where I'm always trying to get my clients to go on like the life coaching end of things and their career stuff. I'm like, if it doesn't feel like that could be my life seriously, then you're not there yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so you've done it and you stepped into it and I want to get into, okay, first of all, music. So let's talk about a little bit, a little more about like what you are actually doing a little bit more with the breath work, with the music. I'm curious, were you already doing the DJing stuff even back when you were doing Orange Theory? So that's when I put it on back burner. So I actually started uh-huh. DJing when I was about 12 years old, okay. back in Czech. <laughs> and I was doing some corporate stuff and I was doing some, you know, small festivals, some small stuff. But then I, I became professional athlete or cyclist. Oh, and wow. so it did not, um, I couldn't right. do day and night, <laughs> right? <laughs> even wow. though I wanted to. So I put it on a back burner for a very long time, but then I loved EDM shows and I love mm-hmm. going back into, into the music. I love dancing and yeah. expressing. And, um, and so, uh, at that time when I went to the, um, uh, dark room, we were going always with my dad, actually. We went to like EDC and, and Ultra Miami. And, and that was like our thing, our bond when we, you know, yeah. go in and, and, and have fun. Yeah. So I was one day at the Ultra and I was like, I'm going to be there. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and I go into the, you know, cave and then I re, re, um, you know, change everything. And then I, I very quickly got into wow. uh, major nightclubs, major festivals. Wow. And you know, actually, how I got there, that might be a, funny little thing just so everybody knows that everything is possible because mm-hmm. I know how so many times you know people just see the lack and people just see I don't have the money the experience right. and so forth right. and so what I did at the beginning I created a yoga fitness dance party <laughs> and I did it 7 p.m until 10 p.m right before the nightclubs open wow. and I went into these big nightclubs and wow. I told to them Smart. do you want to have a group of people here when it's empty anyway Mm. And everybody said yes, because which nightclub doesn't want to have people when it's normally empty? Smart. And then I also brought a different crowd because, you know, right. it, was, uh, it wasn't it was the the traditional crowd. Those oh. were people that were spenders. They, you know, right. uh, they were wearing Lululemon. And, and you, right. you know, it was a right. very particular crowd that loves these type of things. So... So anyway, so that start, you know, happening Smart. and then I start, you know, opening and then I start <laughs> headlining with, wow. with this, with this, uh, you know, amazing, thing growing. amazing. But let me tell you, this is also when I still wasn't integrated and mm. this is when my Aeon phase of life came. Mm. And this is when I, you know, loved the, the, the drugs, the after hours and right. the, the drinking and it was, right. you know, everywhere. Right. And so, so, you know, my little Aquarius got, got these <laughs> little <laughs> things out. 
and uh, and it's not why I started it. Mm-hmm. And so when I quit drinking, mm-hmm. I then went into a nightclub, and I asked myself, "What the hell am I doing here?" I like could not find that same joy wow. and 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 you know thing that got me into it. Mm-hmm. So this is when I started the conscious parties, mm-hmm. the sober ones with nice. blindfolds and with right. whatever we're doing today. Yeah. Because I wanted to change that. I love the music and so many people do it, but they don't know how can they, you know, do this. Mm. And of course, you know, aesthetic dance yeah. parties, which are huge here. That's yeah. a, a great, you know, way to start. <laughs> mm, I'm so excited to see when we are going to do a little thing with you guys at the end. And I'm also really excited to do your actual event because I was telling a friend of mine, with, for me with ecstatic dance, it's important to me. It's just my little thing with me. To not use cannabis or any psychedelics or anything. Like, I'm like, I, it's just a little fun thing I do with myself. I'm like, can I get, like, I'm like, can I get to the point where people are like, she's probably rolling on something straight sober, (laughs) you know? Like, and it's so fun. And that's, I get a vibe. That's kind of what you're doing, like, with the breath work and, you know, getting into coherence. And so I'm curious also, let's talk about breath work. Let's also talk about EMS stuff because when you played at Asprey's event, I was like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I'm just in a really good mood. Because, I mean, they had, like, dry farm wines, which is great, you know, for wine. That's, like, the best, in my opinion. And I just didn't want it. I didn't want anything. So I was just straight, just <laughs> at the end of a long conference day. And I was losing my freaking mind in there. And I was like, I don't know if it's just the music or it's this EMF thing or, like, what is going on. But I was like, I don't even know if you remember or noticed me. But I was losing my mind. I mean, I was all over the place. It was a little spectacle. But I was having so much fun so um uh let's talk about the emf stuff first Mm -hmm. do you think that had an impact on how free i felt in there because i was right in front of that sucker well we were in a (laughs) depolarized zone so so you know and and it it reaches that whole whole room Mm. uh which uh which is amazing i mean i guess you know emfs in in general i'll I'll tell you like what how Mm. i got into it um you know when i healed my mental, physical, emotional body, and I start, you know, kind of really getting grip onto me, the individual yeah. consciousness, then I move to the we. And then I start thinking, you know, the relationships, of course, mm-hmm. you know, recalibrating the tribe around me mm-hmm. to support me. But then it got into, what about the clothes that I'm wearing? What about the paint exactly. that we're breathing? Exactly. What about the air, yes. the water source? And so that all has an impact on us. Mm-hmm. And I basically start creating a conscious space and nice. conscious home nice. and uh but then i moved to houston for for a little bit during COVID when we mm. were you know growing this company and uh we were going to build world's first ever biohacking hotel uh just, oh, just really? FYI. Oh, and wow. it was one of those things that failed because of COVID. we we lost uh, all the funding oh, wow. and and that was that was our you know wow. flagship but uh we'll get back to it hopefully one day <laughs> But anyway, so I was living in downtown for the first time in my life. And I and during COVID, that's when 5Gs were rolled out. Mm-hmm. And um, at that time, you know, I was on offense with EMFs because, you know, yeah. I, I know that it was really talked about in, in biohacking space. Yeah. But also, if you Google it, you know, it tells yeah. you they're just fine and, yeah. and you're, you're good. Yeah. But, I would say I'm still on the fence a little bit. That's why I haven't had an EMF episode. I, I am taking it. I, I've really dived into it. And I'm a skeptic to a skeptic, but most of what I'm basing, uh, the reason I'm open to it still is based on the experiences of people I really trust. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, maybe I am not as sensitive or don't realize I'm as sensitive, but like that guy's really knowledgeable, that guy. And they're all of these people that are like conscious, healthy, educated. They're like, no, it affects me bad. And I'm like, all right, I will listen to that. So anyway, Mm -hmm. I'll just let you know, I'm kind of in that. No, but I I was the same and I I was doing everything. And you know why? It's because they're invisible. Mm -hmm. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, I'll give this acknowledgement. I don't know if you ever read the book EMF from Dr. Mercola. I didn't read that one. Um, Actually, great book to to learn about it, to like really make up your mind (laughs) because he obviously goes into Mm. deep studies and science. Mm -hmm. So when I read that, well, so when I was in Houston, I start, I stop being able to sleep and I start getting mm. depression mm. and I start uh, just feeling anxious. Yeah. Just didn't unexplained basically health issues, but yet I that's was biohacker. I, I was doing, you that's know. That's what I keep hearing. Yeah. yeah. I was doing everything, you know. Right. Picture taking when it comes to uh, right. lifestyle at that point. Right. Now, 
I started tuning into this and I read his book um, and basically I was like, is it the EMFs? Mm -hmm. So then I look outside of my window mm -hmm. and literally a 5G tower mm -hmm. less than 200 feet away from, mm -hmm. from the window. And so I was like, okay, let me just look into it. Mm -hmm. Now, a little bit later, I discovered there's over 6,000 studies actually proving the negative wow. harmful effect on All our right. bodies. Right. And... Um, what happens with EMFs, so what Dr. McCullough mm -hmm. says, he says that in, you know, it's like the cigarettes of 1950, mm. where cigarettes were believed to be good for us. <laughs> you know, people were pushing it as like, you gotta, if you don't smoke, you, you, yeah, you, you, right. don't, you don't go. <laughs> A cigarette away keeps the doctor away. The pounds away or whatever they were trying to do. <laughs> no, so, so, you know, these people are marketing geniuses, obviously. Mm -hmm conglomerate totally. you know, corporations totally. and they also know our psyche mm -hmm. and it's really fucked up mm -hmm. <laughs> let me you know put it right here mm -hmm. but so i um i started looking into this and i basically what he was comparing is that um right now emfs are the new cigarettes you mm -hmm. know they are continue to be using actually very similar pr companies and agencies mm -hmm. and strategies mm -hmm. and basically the whole reason why i mean it's telecommunication companies you know they're massive mm -hmm. and they don't want to do it the right way mm -hmm. and what's interesting actually even the 5g towers they could be 70 percent more efficient and less harmful if they were just done the right way from the beginning wow. but it would cost more money, more money wow. um, which i thought was pretty mm -hmm. crazy mm -hmm. now what happened was, so I went on a hunt to then explore all of these different devices. Yeah. So how do I protect myself? Mm -hmm. Now, what I didn't realize is that, you know, there's tons of harmonization devices that will harmonize your biorhythms. Mm -hmm. And it usually takes about six months to even feel anything, mm -hmm. uh, FYI. Mm -hmm. And I never really felt anything, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, not much release. Then I found the key technologies which, uh, which is what, what ended up helping me. Mm -hmm. And what it is, it's the only device in the world that actually figure out a way how to depolarize the mm. harmful effects of EMFs. Okay. And what depolarization means, think about it as it renaturalizes the space around you. So when you think about EMFs, they come from everywhere. So whatever, it's your microwave, your appliances, your TV. If you have a smart anything at home, it's just shooting through you as you're walking through the house neighbor's Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi, satellites, 5G. I mean, it's literally, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it's not going anywhere. We've got even satellites now mm -hmm. that are carpeting the entire mm -hmm. earth. And something to understand, you know, there's man-made EMF and non-man-made EMFs. Right. Man-made is sun. We've been around mm -hmm. that forever. Uh, with, you know, regular uh, mm -hmm. hygiene, we, we can, uh, EMF hygiene, we can, you know, get through it. Mm. But when it comes to man-made, you know, 100 years ago, this didn't exist. Mm. So what happens is it's kind of like toxins. More exposed you are, more frequently you are, it yeah. loads in. But it may not develop any serious issues until 5, 10, 30 years later. So we know, you know, that it's very detrimental to your immune system. We know that your, your inflammation levels yeah. go up. We know, um, you know, the unexplained issues. And to go back into kind of like like why some people feel it and why others don't, 3% mm -hmm. three, three of the world are EMF hypersensitive. Mm -hmm. And this is a medical term. Mm -hmm. People cannot literally even hold their cell phone. Mm -hmm. And we get people like this all the time that literally can't thank us enough because they can be around cell phone after using this device. Mm -hmm. Then you've got about 35% people that are uh, sensitive but not hypersensitive. Mm -hmm. And this is the mild issues. This is where I fall in. Mm -hmm. So can't really explain what it is, mm -hmm. and, um, but I'm still able to you know, mm -hmm. power through it. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the world, everybody gets impacted, just like through cigarettes, yeah. but you don't really feel it uh, as right. much until something comes in and knocks on your door. <laughs> mm, thank you for explaining that. I think, you know, I definitely... <sighs> You're, I'm sure you're the same way. At least for me, it's like I'm constantly getting bombarded by all these companies that have data and research. I mean, great, you know, biohacking companies. I've had to learn to be like the most skeptic of skeptics. Yes, I'm op open to everything. I'll look into everything. But also, like, we deal with groupthink, you know, of like this, you know, sorry to say, but I think breast implant illness is one of those things right now. It's like, that's what it is. It's breast implant illness. And it kind of, I'm not saying bre that obviously exists, but mm -hmm. it's almost these explants has become this like, get them out if women want to get them out. Like, that's fine. But it, as a nutrition coach, it 
gets me sometimes because I'm like, you might have something else going on and like, I mean, do it if you want to, but like, I just mm-hmm. see, have seen that over and over. So I get into that. It's like, is this group think? Okay, let me check this. You know, is, am I, you know, blaming on my fatigue? Oh, it's got to be the EMF. You know, so just being candid. Mm-hmm. I, these are the processes I go through. Then I go into, okay, let me look at the research. Yeah, inflammation, for sure. The way the cells are behaving, the, red, the way the red blood cells are behaving, very concerning. Very concerning, you know? Um, and so I kind of go, and then I'm like, well, what if the human body can adapt to that? You know, (laughs) I mean, I go through some really deep processes, but what I'll say is at least for me, you know, and some of the EMF stuff, I, people have graciously sent me some things and I just, I am a, like, uh, until I have experienced and I've seen it replicated the benefit of something, I mean, otherwise then I just, why, you know, somebody's like, Hey, try this lotion. And it like, didn't really do that much for me. I'm, you know. I'm going to be like, hey, everybody, get this lotion, you know. But I will say the one that you guys are using, I don't know if it's just the high-frequency heart coherence stuff of your team or what, But and then the one that you had in the show when you were performing, I was like, I don't know. It does feel like a different space. I Like, it felt really, really, like... I don't know, almost like the day after a mushroom journey kind of energy. You know <laughs> yeah, what I like mean? Yeah, like open field. Uh-huh. And... Yeah. Well, what's interesting is like instead of basically harmonizing, right, what it does, it depolarizes. And when that happens, you basically create the space around you back to its natural state yeah. as if you were earthing or as if you were, you know, of earth. Yeah. And so that's why like our answer is not to quit technology, right? but use it you know, with right. the right, uh, right. Uh, shielding or, or device to, to support it. And what is it called? The one that you guys, uh, use? Key, so it's key technologies key of, and, uh, uh, so key liquid is the, the proprietary okay. invention in this. Okay. And it holds a full spectrum light inside of it. Oh, wow. And so, uh, the inventor of this was actually the inventor of the year in European union because wow. how groundbreaking this is. Wow. And it's got over 25 independent studies. Proving nice. that it actually works. Nice. And so that's that to me was also yeah, like important. okay, this this that. <laughs> yeah. And then, but then I mean, go meditate with it. You know, go yeah. sit, sit sit by it, and you you know, if you're a sensitive person that yeah. that has a practice, you're gonna feel it. Yeah. Cool. Thank <laughs> you for sharing all that. Okay. Uh, last thing, breath. We have to talk about breath for a second. I mean, that's like so. Um, at the process you want to do at the end, is that breath? Are we going to do some breath? Yes. So we're going to do a short system reset. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anything you want to say about how you're using biohacking in your processes before we do that, you know, and what breath work means. You, by the way, we didn't even mention you did like a year with Wim Hof. You've been on like stormy mountains in your shorts. <laughs> we didn't even, I feel like we didn't get half to, to half of it, but it's basically when you, one of your first big, huge lows, you then, did darkness then or no no so, this is way earlier so i actually went to see wim hof even before dark dark room okay and, and so um my cycling career was ended because of my health and very early on i was about 20 years old and uh, i had a chronic fatigue epstein bar i was sick every two weeks yeah. and basically i i couldn't co up with um with the uh, the amount of training anymore wow and I did it to myself because I was already running a business. And uh, at the same mm-hmm. time, I was running this carbon bike frame business. Wow. And instead of me recovering, you know, I right. was calling Cause factories. Because you're, you're 19 and, or 20. <laughs> yes. And you're like, I can do everything. <laughs> yep. But that led me to find biohacking. That, that's what led okay. me to find health right. and find Wim Hof. But I walked in there into the, the Polish excursion. That was my first uh, experience. <laughs> I think it's like five or seven days of just brutal cold. Wow. And, and you know, the first day you, you start walking on, on, a, on a snow and then you jump for 10 minutes into a, a moving, you know, icy 28 degree water. And so, but I walked in there with mild fever and I was basically sick. I mean, my kidneys were hurting. I, oh I was like, God. not really that well. Oh, man. But I walked out of there healthy. Wow. And everything that I was taught nice. there was against what we were taught. Right. You know? Right. And um, that would be too hard on your body. You're just like, let me just boost my immune system like crazy. Yeah, instead. let me just like, <laughs> just, just like, here you go. Yeah, wow. And, and that's the curiosity, honestly, that mm-hmm. always led me, the questioning of everything in life. Mm-hmm. And then kind of like what you were saying, you know, open 
to everything, but like show me how, and then let me see if I can do it as well. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. But but that's when I I walked out of there, and I was like, I have to train under under Wim, and I I went on that year, uh, you know, training. So awesome. And uh, I'm a little I'm a little. I, some of my audience might know if they've heard me little mentions over the years. I always. <laughs> I always like when I have been in a dating relationship. I'm like, you only have one competition, Wim Hof. I'm sorry, he's the man. <laughs> it's like a little <laughs> joke, but he really is. Like, wow, what a beautiful human. You know what he has brought to the world is just bar none, and through his pain as well, mm -hmm. following his own intuition to go out into the cold and being brave and just putting his like, you know. <laughs> everything he's got to share that with others is so beautiful you know so okay so here you are with Wim is that when the breathwork thing really got yeah so I mean right after so at the same time that I was running Orange Theories I also opened up the largest yoga fitness meditation studio in wow. uh, in Atlanta and it was this two floor multiple rooms fully five senses immersive experience that's so cool. and that's when I started my breathwork Okay. And so the classes ended up being the, the fullest classes. Wow. And this is before, you know, anybody knew about breath. And it yeah. was this like weird thing that right. people are getting high on. <laughs> right. And so, so that's, that's where the whole, okay. you know, journey started. Wow. So it's just, yeah, it's been, it's like you're taking a little from here, a little here. Tragic, horrible pain, healing skills. Oh, this didn't work out. That did. Wow. I'm with Wim Hof. You know, you've just like brought it all together into what you're doing now. Well, you, you describe it. So system reset is literally 15 years of traveling <laughs> and tools put into a simple toolbox that basically anybody can do that has science behind them. So and all of the tools are scientifically backed. So I kind of also was going on the both brains. Um, and then um, what you're receiving is, is, you know, this journey, clear pathway to your journey through self-transformation. And something that we might be interested in. So what we're rolling out uh, in the next six months is going to be this EEG headband mm -hmm. that can measure group coherence. Wow. So my goal is to create Peloton or Orange Theory for your brain. Wow. And so that's going to be uh, my secret wish is to get million people in a coherent state at the same wow. time. Wow. And imagine what can happen with prayers, with wow. manifestation. And so that's going to be kind of the next 10 years of my journey. Is you got to team this... up with Joe Dispenza on that. I bet yeah. he'd be excited about that. And also, like, I don't know if you have you read Phil Jackson's 11 Rings? No, no. Did you know? So he, I mean, he coached Michael Jordan. And Kobe and Shaq and all of these guys. I read his book. And did you know that back when in the 80s, when Michael Jordan was playing, that his, like, he would have them go breathe together before games and all the other coaches made fun of him. Like, oh, are you guys going to go do your kumbaya stuff in there now? Like, <laughs> you know, and his, his uh, teaching was one breath, one mind. One breath, one mind had them. And look what happened with the Bulls. Look what happened with the Lakers. You know what I mean? And so, That's like, incredible. anyway, just sharing that because that would be, I, I, I'm thinking sports teams. I'm thinking <laughs> Joe Dispenza type stuff. Like, yeah. that's cool. And we're using his algorithms for, nice. for group coherence okay. and Stephen Kohler algorithms for flow state. So we're actually, nice. we're learning from, from all of that wow. and just making it accessible. Because Amazing. the golden standard right now for EEG it costs about $15,000 and you have to be sitting and still. Right. And uh, our technology, we can be moving wow. and it's still only 3% less accurate. It still hits the, uh -huh. the clinical wow. accuracy wow. while you're moving. And so that's... Uh, Super cool. Yeah, whatever's yoga, meditation. I mean, wow. you can literally use it for, for golfing, for sports. It, it, uh, it's all about, you know, testing, right? Like knowing are you disengaged? Is your, where is your brain at? Damn. And then we're going to teach you with neurofeedback how to get actively uh, wow. engaged or f flow state or creative. And um, we can, we've even figured out a way how to connect it to lighting. So in all wow. of our events, when we're going to be touring next year, uh -huh. we're going to connect it to the club lights. So let's say let's say we hit over fifty one percent people uh, in theta brainwave, it will turn purple, and so we can teach people in real life in a group to do this. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow, it's like the um, it's like the or ring or whoop strap of like the next level of just straight coherence. Wow, and it will have HRV as well. <laughs> oh wow, of course. Wow, that is. I mean, when are you launching that next year? So we're in. We're about. 
three months away from pre-sales, so we're gonna wow. we're gonna we're like pre-launch it. Yeah, uh, we already had some tests at the conference. Nice. But you know, next year we're planning to go to all of these conferences and do it in a large group, nice. so we can uh, we can start getting coherent. <laughs> uh, I'll be watching for it. I was on that pre-sale list for Aura Ring forever. I love that when something new is coming out, I'm like, sign me up. Let's try it out. So awesome! Wow. I'm, 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 are you a manifesting generator in human design? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely seems like it. That's Anybody funny. knows human design? Yeah, that's what a manifesting <laughs> generator is like. <laughs> it just means like things happen and you can create and just like actually get it done like in a <laughs> wizard like level it's cool <laughs> all right so shall we dive in a little bit Let's for our it. practice at the end thank you so much yes no all right thank you and um and just disclaimer again do not drive do not stand are not be in, in or around water uh because uh it, it might get a little intense uh if you've never done deep breath work before we're going to be breathing through your diaphragm and we're just going to be using the belly, chest, all the way into your head on inhale. It looks and sounds like this. And then when you exhale, you just let it go. So it's going to be the basic flow of Wim Hof retention breathing, but we're going to add to it. And uh, essentially, we're going to do three rounds of, of short breath. And uh, we're going to focus today on the first three energy centers. So most of the issues that I see in this world, it's the first three yeah. uh, centers. So we're going to do a quick reset to rebalance it. And uh, uh, you can do this anytime throughout the day. Uh, I love doing this right before meetings or like a midday thing, you know, mm. noon or, or even before sleep. And uh, you can kind of work with the intention that we're going to reset back to baseline. And um, the last thing I will tell you about system reset is... Think of yourself, the body, as the hardware, mind as the software. And just like uh, we have to connect to the internet for us to download new software or new apps, yeah. we're going to connect into the inner net. Nice. And that's through this exercise, through changing the brain state. Nice. Now, that being said, let's close our eyes. And first thing first, let's just settle in. Go back into that coherent space and imagine that circle of these beautiful beings around us that are tuning into this. Reach out to their hands again and just connect. We're going to do it together as one. And before we get started, I want to work with you, which means we're going to claim your energy. So first thing first, just simply state for yourself, I am calling all of my energy back from all the people, all the places, whatever I've left it. Throughout the day, we left the energy on the phones, in our thoughts. So just call it back into you, what belongs to you. When you feel this, now reverse this. I am sending all of the energy back to all the people, all the places that have left it on me. Anytime somebody thinks of you, this is not good or bad. This is just an energy exchange or imprint that gets left on you. So, send it back, whatever doesn't belong to you. And from this place, connect to your field, connect to your energy. And we're going to start breathing deep. So, we're going to start inhale into your nose. Exhale out your mouth. Deeper on inhale. No force on exhale. Full in. Let it out. Continue breathing deep at your rhythm at your pace, and just find a rhythm that serves you. With each inhale, generate this energy from within. With each exhale, send it to your first energy center around your perineum. And just start powering this energy up as if it was spinning clockwise. This little energy down at your root chakra is spinning and spinning. Continue breathing deeper and deeper. And as we're heading into the end of this first round, can you speed it up? Can you start generating more power, more energy, more activation, and just start feeling this beautiful circle lightening up as if this beautiful bubble of light was shining, turning on so bright. And with each inhale, generate love. With each exhale, release stress, pain, anxiety, fear, anything that doesn't belong here. Final 10.
final five. Now, whatever's left in you, give it to me now. Bring that power back to you. For three, for two, for one. And now, final deep inhale. Hold your breath. Squeeze your lower abdomen, your perineum, or your bathroom muscle. And just hold this right here. Sends the energy reaching down to earth, grounding you down. And imagine as if everything from that chakra was releasing down. Let it go. Any of those feelings that you might have had, the lack of grounding. Let it all down. Sense it recalibrating, reharmonizing. And slowly exhale. Relax your body. And hold it right here for a moment. Tune into those feelings. Connect into that center. Check in with yourself. And from this place, we're going to move that attention into your second energy center, right below your navel. And we're going to start breathing deep again. But this time, we're going to breathe in and out your mouth. Let us begin. Fully in. Continue breathing with this flow. Find that rhythm that serves you. Each time that you inhale, find more room. Each time that you exhale, find more relaxation. And as you're breathing, I want you to start focusing on this circle underneath your navel and start feeling this spinning and spinning, this change, this energy of shifting, the sacral chakra, the sexual energy, anything that you might have dealt with, any traumas, Anything there might be here to be lifted, I want you to contact and breathe. As you're breathing, find a space and start sensing these grains of sand lifting up. These grains of sands are lifting up to let it go. Lift it up. Any of those powerful experiences that maybe weren't the best for you. Final 10. Whatever you are, can we go a little bit faster? little bit deeper. Feel this energy. Feel this connection. Feel this power. Final five. Three, two, one, and one more deep. Inhale. Inhale again. Hold your breath and squeeze your lower abdomen. Connect into your sacral chakra. Sense this light turning on. Sense these grains of sand lifting up around you, to lift up that energy, lift up that old, let it move you, feel this energy in and around you, through every pore of your skin, and observe this light through the top of your head, sending this golden light down to your sacral chakra, and all the way down to earth, and slowly release. Let that relax. Let that go. And imagine yourself on an elevator that is staking you down to the center of earth and sense the earth starting to spin around you, clearing, recalibrating, rebalancing. And exhale everything out. Feel and tune into this. And move that focus into your third energy center, the center of your power or ego. So many of us tend to operate out of this place. So we're going to give that up for this moment. And we're going to be breathing deep again in and out of your mouth. Let us begin. And focus on this flow. Focus on this rhythm. And as you're breathing... Now start focusing on the same length on inhale and same length on exhale. We're going to be also releasing this out. Feel this breath of air, this ha, mana, prana, chi, the energy coming in and out of your solar plexus. Sense it start spinning, activating, moving this energy. Moving yourself into this vortex of energy. And start lifting this even higher into your heart. Now breathe in and out of your heart. 
Breathe for this group. Breathe for this tribe. Feel this energy and connection with all of us here and use the energy of giving love and receiving love. Keep on breathing. Now move it up into your throat. Let us start sensing this little ha. Ah, ha. Move that voice. Anytime you were not heard, anytime you did not speak up, start releasing it out of your space. Feel that energy shifting even higher. Now move it into the center of your brain and start seeing the light. Start moving into this light as if this beam of light was around your forehead and start moving into the sun. Final 10. As you're breathing, I want you to start circling into this highest, greatest expression that you've ever had about yourself, teleporting yourself up higher. Final three, final two, final one, and inhale. Hold your breath, squeeze your bathroom muscle, lower abdomen, upper abdomen, flex your hands, flex your arms, and push the energy all the way up into the top of your head. Keep on holding your breath, squeezing it and moving your consciousness towards the sun. Start moving towards the father sky until you enter the sun. Keep on squeezing it even further, all of that pain, suffering, sorrow, whatever is left in your body. And exhale, release and move into the sun. Stay inside of this sun and move into the great central sun where we can repower, where our souls goes in between lives. And maybe there's somebody that has passed away in your life, somebody you've loved so much. Just feel their presence. See them in front of you, meeting them halfway, meeting maybe your higher self, your guarding angels, your guides, whatever you believe in. Just enheighten this beautiful, spiritual sense of belonging to all the realms of existence. And just sense how you are restoring, recharging, recalibrating, resetting. Feel this gratitude for yourself, for your life, for all the loved ones. Just activate this thank you, thank you, thank you, my body, my mind, my emotions. All of those beautiful experiences and loved ones in my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And give a thanks to that person or people that have showed up. And just sense them giving you a gift, something. Maybe an answer to a question. Something that you can take away that maybe will make sense today or maybe it will make sense later. But feel this bring it into your body and slowly say I will see you later and imagine your consciousness coming back down through the top of your head infusing down to the base of your spine filling up your feet your whole body with this golden light with this golden frequency and check in with yourself favorite way is just imagine this mirror in front of you. Just look at that mirror and see that beautiful man, woman that you are. Not for what you lack, not for what you've been wishing you had, for what you got, this temple. And give that temple this beautiful love, this beautiful gratitude. And when it feels right, just acknowledge this moment. Acknowledge this group. Give thanks to anybody that's been tuning into this. And know that anytime that you feel alone, that you need more energy, you can always come back to this place. Thank you, thank you, thank you all so much. And when it feels right, just open your eyes and be as gentle as you possibly can for the rest of your day. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Powerful. Mm. Mm. I'll muster up the thinking mind to ask. Uh, you have a way, you have an app, you have a way for people to access us more often, correct? Absolutely, yes. What is it called? 
So um, actually, with this recording, we'll we'll gift a a on demand library, so oh, that way uh, people can experience more of this. Uh, we've got anything from three minutes to two hour full blown wow, journeys. Cool. So depending on your time and and need. And uh, it's uh, at the Noah Aon, N O A A O N dot com. Okay. And uh, yeah, thank that's... you. <laughs> I can't wait to I can't wait to try it. Uh, I have an app also with a biohacking section, but I'm not a breathwork facilitator. Uh, we have a breathwork section coming, so I'll be sure to link it yes. there too, and people can check it out with the expert. That was unbelievable. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your journey. Thank you for showing up in your power. And just doing it all with a smile, <laughs> you know? Thank it's you. It's appreciated. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs>